What is going on guys? Welcome back to another very exciting video. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my top holdings in my portfolio. In my opinion, one of the most exciting stocks in the stock market right now, and that is BABA or Alibaba Group. So we're gonna be going over what has happened over the last year that has caused the stock to fall in such a massive way. And then we're gonna take a look at basically a projection for 2023. What I think, in my opinion, is going to happen macroeconomically that could really have a huge effect on Alibaba stock. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. If we look at the last year, Alibaba is actually only down 26.54%, which is absolutely insane. We can see that a year ago, it was actually under $120. And even since then, it has fallen in a massive way a few times. So it had a massive drop back in March and then a massive drop back in April. And then it kind of continued a downtrend from August all the way through to November. But if we zoom out, we can see that the five-year chart actually gets even worse. So over five years, it's actually down 50%, over 50%. And from its all-time highs here, we can see that the stock is down 72.36%. And with that massive drop in stock price, we can see that that has had a huge effect on their forward PE ratio. So a little over a year ago in September of 2021, they were sitting at a 16.21 forward PE ratio. Now they're sitting below a 10 forward PE, which is absolutely insane. They are currently sitting at a 9.17 forward PE ratio, which when you think about other large growth tech companies out there on the market, the only company that even somewhat compares to this is a meta. And meta currently is sitting closer to a 15 forward PE ratio. So this is absolutely insane valuations that we are seeing here for BABA. And one of the first things that really affected Alibaba's stock price was China's big crackdown on tech companies. So they came after a lot of companies like Alibaba, Tencent, JD, and basically started looking at these companies and seeing how much power they had over you know, the Chinese economy, how much influence they really had. And China did not like that. They issued a lot of fines, basically started to try and even the playing field across China and really reduce the power of these big tech companies to really keep them in check so that the Chinese government you know, could really assert their control over them. And what that has done obviously has had a huge effect on these companies because they are being fined you know, billions of dollars and have been fined billions of dollars over the last year to two years that have really affected the companies in a massive way, right? It's going to obviously have a huge effect on their earnings and how much money they can really reinvest into the business. China would claim that they actually were only doing this for common prosperity. And what they're saying with common prosperity is basically that there were too few of companies, too few of people with too much wealth. And basically that those big tech companies were hogging all of the wealth and that they needed to find those companies, break up some of these monopolies and basically create a more even industry across China. And really what that has done has had a huge negative impact on China. The tech industry within China makes up 30% of its GDP. So obviously when you start finding 30% of your GDP and start basically reducing the amount of growth within that sector, then that is going to have a huge impact on the Chinese. Chinese economy. Another thing that has had a huge effect on Alibaba as a business and the Chinese economy is their zero pandemic policy. So this policy basically states that if a city or area sees a large increase in the number of cases that it has, then it will be forced to shut down for a period of time until those cases begin to subside. And that is obviously going to have a huge impact on Alibaba as a business for a number of reasons. The first being obviously that if a lot of these industries are shut down, then Alibaba has no goods to sell. They can't basically produce these items that Alibaba as a marketplace is selling. The second impact is that these people obviously have jobs. So when their jobs are basically cut off and they are not allowed to work, then they have no income to pay their bills and pay a lot of their necessities of, throughout life. And then also to spend money on Alibaba and the goods that are produced throughout Alibaba and throughout its site. So this is going to have kind of a twofold impact that is going to negatively affect not only Alibaba, but also the Chinese economy in general. And there are two other things that have had a huge effect on Alibaba and the Chinese economy. The first being that their real estate market has completely collapsed over the last six months. This has had a huge effect on basically people's access to money, people's access to housing, and obviously is going to have a huge negative impact on their economy in general, just like we saw in the US in 2008. And the second thing that has really had a huge impact on Alibaba's stock price has been the potential delisting
listing of Chinese stocks from the New York Stock Exchange. So this has really come about over the last couple of years as the SEC started to step in and basically say that they need to be able to have access to Chinese books. They need to be able to look at revenue numbers, EPS numbers, and basically be able to validate them across Chinese companies. And really, China began to fight, fight back immediately, claiming that there would be national security concerns if they allowed US auditors in to look at China's books. So this has been a huge battle, and basically the potential delisting of these stocks has had a huge impact on Alibaba, on Tencent, on JD, that are all listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So I want to address all of these concerns basically in reverse order. The first one being that the potential delisting of Chinese companies. Right now, what we've seen is they have actually struck a deal a few months ago. The auditors have been into China, looked at the books. They were surprised at how much access they were actually given. And overall, things have kind of looked positive. The real question mark will come at the end of the year. Over the next couple months, we're expecting an announcement from the SEC on basically how they expect to proceed. Are they going to give a green light for these Chinese companies to stay listed, or are they going to request that these companies are delisted? China or Alibaba is actually one of the first ones that was audited. So overall, we are going to know very quickly if these Chinese companies are going to be able to stay listed. The second is China's real estate market. So overall, this is going to take time. Just like 2008, they need to implement a few things to kind of get trending in the right direction. And the big thing they are starting to do already, and the big thing is basically reducing interest rates. So China has actually started implementing small decreases in their interest rates to kind of revitalize their real estate market, revitalize their economy in general. So that is overall going to be a positive thing, but it's going to take time for them to really start seeing the effects of these interest rate changes uh, and reinvestments you know, into China. And the third thing was the zero pandemic policy. So it's looking more and more like this policy is going to be lifted or reversed. Basically, over the last couple of months, we have seen revolts throughout China, and we also have seen rumors or heard rumors that the Chinese government, even before the revolts, was looking at getting rid of the policy as early as April or May of next year. They were really looking for a springtime, uh, kind of reversing a lot of this policy, and basically throughout the summer, getting rid of this policy completely and really focusing on getting their vaccine numbers up, especially with their elderly population. So over the next six months, we would kind of expect to see a lot of these policies starting to subside and really the economy fully open. And the last thing is the crackdown on big tech. So with the Chinese economy in such a poor position right now, it is very likely that China will not continue to crack down on the tech industry. The tech industry, like we talked about, supports 30% of China's GDP. And they really need to continue to see growth throughout that sector to really start to turn the economy around, right? More jobs, lower interest rates, those are all going to have a big impact on the Chinese economy and a big impact on their tech sector overall. When you lower interest rates, these tech companies are going to have more money to reinvest in the business, to create more jobs, to basically restabilize the Chinese economy and the Chinese real estate industry. In conclusion, I think there are a lot of positive catalysts that could occur over the next year for Alibaba stock. I think the first one being the SEC needs to come out and give the green light for Alibaba to stay listed on the New York Stock Exchange. The second thing is the zero pandemic policy. We really need to see that policy start to go away in China and the Chinese economy to fully open up. And really, if I if we start seeing those two things occur, I think we could start getting back into a price range that we saw kind of here from 2017 all the way through to 2020. We can see that the stock traded as low as $130 all the way up to around $225. So I don't think it's unreasonable for Alibaba to get anywhere from $125 to maybe $175 in the back half of 2023. If we start seeing some of these things start to subside in China and a lot more positivity around these Chinese companies. So overall, again, though, I am just some random guy on the internet. Do not buy stocks just because I'm talking about them. Do your own research. Make sure you are looking into these stocks and that you actually like the business behind them because that is what is going to be most important over the long term. So overall, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.